Welcome to this second online service from St Columbus Church in Ennis with the churches of Kilnasula and Christchurch Spanish Point. We know that others are joining us from around Ireland, the UK and elsewhere. So this is very much your service as well. We are delighted that you are spending this time with us and hope and pray that you and all your loved ones remain safe and well. We follow the service of the Word booklets that you can see uh, below and download on the website. You can also view or download and print the pew sheet for this Sunday, which includes some suggested hymns on YouTube. The links have a choir and lyrics for you to sing along to. So please feel free to pause this service from time to time if you'd like to include the hymns. And we start our service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And together we say, One thing have I asked of the Lord, this is what I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. Who is it that you seek? We seek the Lord our God. Do you seek him with all your heart? We seek him with all our heart. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your soul? We seek him with all our soul. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your mind? We seek him with all our mind. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your strength? We seek him with all our strength. Christ, have mercy. And we say together, Christ, as a light, illumine and guide me. Christ, as a shield, overshadow and hold me. Christ below me, Christ above me, on my left and my right. This day be within and around me, lowly and meek, yet all-knowing, all-powerful. Christ as a light, Christ as a shield, Christ be with me on my left and on my right. So we say the prayer for this Mothering Sunday. God of compassion, whose Son Jesus Christ, the child of Mary, shared the life of a home in Nazareth and on the cross, drew the whole human family to himself. Strengthen us in our daily living, that in joy and in sorrow we may know the power of your presence to bind together and to heal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. The first reading is taken from the book of Exodus. Now a man from the house of Levi went out and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son, and when she saw that he was a fine baby, she hid him for three months. When she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and plastered it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river while her attendants walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child he was crying, and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrews' children, she said. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get you a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Yes. So the child went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child and nurse it for me and I will give you your wages. So the child was taken by the woman, and she nursed it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, 
and she took him as her son. She named him Moses because, she said, I drew him out of the water. Here ends the reading. We say Psalm 127. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labour in vain. Unless the Lord guards the city, the guard keeps watch in vain. It is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil. For he gives sleep to his beloved. Sons are indeed a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the sons of one to you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our second reading is taken from the letter to the Colossians. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so that you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and with gratitude in your hearts sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Mothering Sunday, or Mother's Day, is a rather complicated festival in the Church's calendar. Now you might, some of you say, what does he mean by that? Surely it's simply a time when we celebrate mothers. That's the way it's always been. We see it everywhere. In the shops, on the TV, we're used to buying cards, sometimes some flowers, husbands and children, maybe cooking an occasional breakfast on a tray, prepared with a fairly wide range of culinary skills and of variable quality. Surely it has always been there, always celebrated, always a tradition. But the concept of Mother's Day is actually an American invention that was first celebrated as recently as 1908, when a person called Anna Jarvis held a memorial for her mother in America. She then began a campaign to make Mother's Day a recognized holiday in the United States. Although she was successful in 1914, she was already disappointed with the over-commercialization of the idea as early as the 1920s. Well, as the American holiday was adopted by other countries and cultures, the date was changed to fit onto existing celebrations honoring motherhood, such as the church's Mothering Sunday. 
So whilst keeping Mother's Day is a good thing to do, to say thanks for all that mums do, celebrating the original Mothering Sunday is of quite a different order. In the Feast of Mothering Sunday, we reflect on the holiness of a mother's love, in that it partakes, participates in a different and greater divine love. Not that this is a universal experience, of course. Some people can feel quite ambivalent about today. They might reflect that whilst there are indeed kind, nurturing and loving mothers, their mother was sadly not among them. The headlines and statistics about child neglect and cruelty sadly attest to this. And in a less dramatic way, perhaps some mothers are just more gifted, more committed and devoted than others. Some may reflect that they would love to have been a mother. They would love to have cared for a child, but it never happened for them. For one reason or another, it was not to be. So, unwittingly, a sentimental and saccharine approach to Mother's Day can also make such people feel isolated and marginalised. Conversely, others will have lost their mothers and still grieve that loss. So Mother's Day for them can be a poignant reminder of all that was once life-affirming, all that once brought love and kindness and security into their lives, but is now no more. And for those of us who are fortunate enough to still have a loving mother with us, still to be celebrated, still to be brought flowers and a card and a hug, or at the moment a virtual hug. Perhaps we too might want this day to be more universal, more widely shared than a rather commercialised and degraded secular Sunday. For Mothering Sunday has deeper and older and more nuanced roots than that. We know, for example, that some of the earliest known Mother Day celebrations can be traced back to the spring celebrations of ancient Greece in honour of Rhea, the mother of the gods. And actually in Christian tradition this Sunday has also a mixed history. For example, in the Roman calendar it is still called Letare Sunday, named after the first Latin word of the introit, Rejoice Jerusalem, be glad for her all you who know her. The mother city, the centre of cultural and religious life of a nation's identity, the mystical city, God's home, mysterious, powerful, nurturing, but also like many religious centres, potentially volatile and dangerous places. And until 1969, when Lenten discipline was officially suspended for all Sundays, it was also known as Refreshment Sunday, because it was the only day during Lent when abstinence was not required and people could eat and drink their fill. So, for those who have given up a few favourite treats and tipples, take heart today. Quite how today then became Mothering Sunday is unclear, but a possible explanation is that the Pope of the time said Mass on this day in the Roman Basilica of the Holy Cross in Jerusalem, which was reputed to contain relics of the true Holy Cross acquired in Jerusalem by Empress Helena, St. Helena, mother of Constantine the Great. Traditions developed and began to focus on the cathedrals around the country, the mother churches of the diocese. And later, at a local level, people were called to return to the churches where they had been originally baptised, also known as Mother Churches. But whatever the reason, this Sunday became associated in people's minds with the idea of Mother. It became customary in the big country estates and houses for servants and apprentices living at the master's house miles away from their own homes, to be given the day off to return to their families, to attend the church where they had been baptised. 
they presented their mothers with simnel cakes, rich in eggs, butter, and fruit, ingredients not used otherwise during Lent. So whilst, of course, it's fine to keep Mother's Day, to recognise that aspect of today's origins, to give the cards and the flowers and the hugs, just as we delight in Father Christmas and snowmen and presents and the family gathering at Christmas, we should remember that what we celebrate today as Christians is but part of a love that is beyond the limitations of human demonstration and imagination. A love that knows no bounds, no limitations or restrictions. Gather your little ones to you, O God, as a hen gathers her brood to protect them. Says the prayer, the song of St. Anselm, and it continues. Jesus, like a mother, you gather your people to you. You are gentle with us as a mother with her children. Often you weep over our sins and our pride. Tenderly you draw us from hatred and judgment. You comfort us in sorrow and bind up our wounds. In sickness you nurse us and with pure milk you feed us. Jesus, by your dying we are born to new life. By your anguish and labour we come forth in joy. Despair turns to hope. Through your sweet goodness, through your gentleness, we find comfort in fear. Your warmth gives life to the dead. Your touch makes sinners righteous. Lord Jesus, in your mercy, heal us. In your love and tenderness, remake us. In your compassion, bring grace and forgiveness. For the beauty of heaven, may your love prepare us. Let us therefore today and every day seek to show some measure of that maternal and nurturing love for each other and for all the people of this world. Amen. So let us now declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our heart through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now pray for our church, for ourselves and neighbours, and for the needs of the whole world. Jesus said that those who remain faithful to him will bear much fruit. So we pray for communities of Christians throughout the world, for church leaders, and for all women, men and children who seek to know and build God's kingdom At this extraordinary time where our church buildings are largely closed, we reflect that the church is so much more than bricks and mortar. For in reality, we are the church. Let us in our lives, in our witness, in our prayers and loving actions, reflect your love, embody your spirit, Despite the limitations of distance and isolation, help us to find new ways to reach out, new means to welcome and nurture the marginalised, the rejected, the lonely, the fearful. So we pray for people of all races, all nations, all creeds and faiths, all ways of loving and living, and all the other definitions and distinctions that seek to divide us from one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, as we see the brokenness of the world, we pray
pray for healing among the nations, for food where there is hunger, for freedom where there is oppression, for joy where there is pain, for peace among all your children. Just as a mother watches her children, you see the damage we do in your world and you forgive our selfishness, greed and stupidity. May your love strengthen us so we can work to change ourselves and thereby the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray especially for mothers and for stepmothers, grandmothers, godmothers, and all those women who have loved and laughed, wept and worked to care for others. Let us be a source of encouragement, support and friendship for them as they courageously accept this inspiring responsibility. Bless all parents and all carers, and strengthen those families living under stress. We know that for some, Mother's Day is not a celebration but a time of heartache. May they have the comfort of knowing that your love for them is constant, your understanding is perfect, your compassion is never ending. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for the very old, for those living with serious illness, and for those who love them and struggle as they witness their loved ones diminishing health and daily challenges. We pray to you through Christ the great healer, for all those who suffer from the coronas, COVID-19 virus in Ireland and across the world. Give wisdom to policymakers, skill to healthcare professionals and researchers, comfort to everyone in distress, and a sense of calm to us all in these days of uncertainty and distress. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray for all who mourn. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. As we remember all those who have died, we light a candle in our hearts to remind us of his love and sacrifice and his fellowship with them. Almighty God is our eternal mother and father. We entrust to God every mother's child who has died, remembering those particularly dear to us, those we have loved and lost. And we pray that all those departed will rest in peace and rise in glory. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, who showed compassion to the outcast, acceptance to the rejected, and love to those to whom no love was shown. Amen. And together we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O God, make clear to us each road. Make safe to us each step. When we stumble, hold us. When we fall, lift us up. When we are hard pressed, deliver us and bring us at last to your glory. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, evermore. Amen.
May God bless you and all those whom you love, this day and every day. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.